Bad news, mates. Legendary Australian automaker Holden is officially out of business. The most important Australian car manufacturer is folding after an incredible 164 year run. As Mitsubishi, Ford and Toyota have all closed their plants down under, there won't be any cars manufactured in Australia, maybe forever. It's sad, no doubt, but how did a company with so much great history fail? Was it mismanagement under GM or something else? In this video, we're gonna take a look at the reason why Holden was able to succeed for so long and try to pinpoint the beginning of their downfall and figure out if there's any chance the brand will be resurrected in the future. All the way back in 1856, James Alexander Holden, an immigrant from England, set up shop making saddles in Adelaide on the south coast of Australia. Back at the turn of the 20th century, some cars came from the factory as a chassis plus drivetrain, but no body. So coach building companies like J.A. Holden would build custom bodies or coaches to fit on top of these chassis. By 1923, they were producing 12,000 vehicle bodies a year, which included Model T bodies for Ford until Ford could finish building a factory of their own in Australia. Towards the end of the 1920s, the Great Depression hit Holden hard, and they went from producing 34,000 bodies a year to just over 1,600. Take a hurt. They were dangerously close to shutting down until General Motors swooped in and bought Holden in 1931, renaming the company General Motors Holden Limited. GM kept the brand afloat, and Holden was able to continue building bodies for Chrysler, Austin, DeSoto, Morris, and Willys Overland. The first official Holden car debuted in 1948. It goes by a few different names, the 48215 and the FX, but it was marketed as the Holden to honor their founder, James Alexander Holden. In Australia, this says it all, the FX, the first Holden the 1948 symbol of our manufacturing maturity. This mid-sized sedan had stylish fenders and a big chrome grille. Aussies were stoked because this was the first all Australian car, something that they could finally call their own. Sales boomed and Holden followed up the 48215 with other models. And by the end of the 1950s, they were exporting cars to 17 different countries. By 1962, they sold their millionth car. They employed almost 24,000 workers across seven factories throughout Australia. And even though this period marked the peak of Holden production, they were just getting started. The Holden HK Monaro launched in 1968. This sleek Coke bottle style car was loosely styled after some Chevys of the time and was available with a 350 cubic inch Chevy V8 that put out 250 horsepower. A Monaro GTS 327 driven by Bruce McPhee won the legendary Bathurst 500 the year it came out, which gave Holden its first race victory. Holden proved that they could keep up with American performance and their style was on point too check this thing out the Sandman is a good example of an offbeat car that would probably never work in other parts of the world but in Australia this weird surf wagon ute was legendary Holden special vehicles or HSV was a performance division that started in 1987 replacing the Holden dealer team HSV has made some of the coolest performance vehicles to ever come out of Australia one of my personal favorites is the HSV Malu Named for the aboriginal word for thunder, the Z-Series Malu R8 is the fastest performance pickup truck in the world, even faster than the Dodge Ram SRT10, you know, the one with the Viper motor. It makes me really sad we'll never see the R8 Malu in the US. So, when did things start going a little wrong? So long, mate. You've been bloody good to me, but it's time to move on. Peter Hannenberger took over as managing director of Holden in 1999, and from the get-go, Hannenberger had a strong vision for the company. He proposed an ambitious 10-year plan that included the development of a small, affordable, all-wheel drive car that could compete with the BMW 3 Series. Hannenberger disregarded the opinions of GM execs abroad and focused on what he thought Australians wanted out of a car. Hannenberger understood who drove Holden's, and he wasn't afraid to lay into it a little bit. Australia, what's your favorite sport? Football. Snack. Ice. Animal. Kangaroo. And what's your favorite car, Australia? Holden! A good example of a car that catered to the local market is the Holden Ute. It's basically the personification of business up front, party in the back. The Ute was wildly popular with blue-collar workers, farmers, and tradesmen. 
By 2002, 21% of all cars driven on Australia were Holdens. That's nuts. To put that in perspective, GM holds the biggest market share in the US at only 17%. That year, Holden posted a $265 million profit. At the helm was Peter Hannenberger, who is regarded as the last great director of the company. Keyword, last. Hannenberger's plan called for the expansion of Holden's plant located in Elizabeth. Hannenberger emphasized the need for halo car development to showcase performance, and the result was the Commodore SSV. It was one of the most insane cars on the planet. You could get it in either a sedan or a ute, and like most Halo cars, the technology in the Commodore SSV was supposed to trickle down to the rest of the lineup. Needless to say, Hannenberger knew which direction to steer the ship, whether his bosses in Detroit agreed with him or not. And guess what? His plan worked. Holden continued to post record profits. In 2003, they made $285 million, and in 2004, 300 million. But that was the last year they ever made money. It also coincided with the retirement of Peter Hannenberger. Uh oh, things are starting to get shaky. After Hannenberger retired, GM execs saw an opportunity to tighten their leash on Holden. GM wanted Holden to be their global distribution center for that part of the world, instead of focusing on just the Australian market. Essentially, GM was telling an Australian company not to make any Australian cars. This didn't sit well with the company and would prove to be one of the first death blows in Holden's slow demise. Soon after the departure of Peter Hannenberger in 2003, his 10 year plan was quickly tossed aside in the garbage. Holden, close to $1 billion deep into the development of the VE Commodore, struggled to bring the car to market. People wanted more fuel efficiency and Holden failed to deliver. Factors outside of the company's control, such as skyrocketing global exchange rates, made exporting cars way more costly, and the number of exports shriveled up. Just when things seemed like they couldn't get any worse, the global financial crisis of 2008 hit. GM had to sacrifice brands like Hummer, Saturn, and very unfortunately for Holden, Pontiac. This sucked for Holden, who produced the Pontiac G8 for export. That's right, if you have a G8, it's Australian. As more and more Holden models were discontinued to make room for rebadged GM models, the company started losing its Australian identity. In 2013, GM announced that they would shut down the Holden plant in Elizabeth, one of their highest producing plants, and the last car manufacturing plant in Australia. And in 2017, the factory officially shut down, leaving the remaining 25 people out of a job. One of the last cars to roll off the line was the HSV GTSR, W1, that's a lot of letters. The fastest, most powerful, and most expensive car ever produced in Australia. And it's beautiful. And it's also proof of the disconnect between what Australians want and what's sustainable. Around this time, Toyota, Mitsubishi, and Ford had all closed their factories as well. It wasn't looking good. With so many manufacturers pulling out of Australia, it's clear that it wasn't just out of touch decisions of General Motors that led to Holden's downfall. It has a lot to do with the percentage of the global car market that Australia represents. The countries with the most car sales in 2018 were China, the US, and Japan. Australia comes in at 16th on that list with 873,000 cars sold, just a fraction of the biggest markets. So if it costs a lot to make cars for a small market, it won't be profitable. At the same time, manufacturing in places like GM's Thailand plant cost nothing compared to the parts and labor in Australia. So it became the preferred country to produce GM cars for that region. But as sales dropped worldwide and global markets became even less profitable, GM pulled the plug on the Chevy plant in Thailand as well. Sorry, sorry Thailand. In 2015, GM stopped manufacturing Chevrolets in Europe, and in 2017, they sold their European brand Opel to PSA. So it's clear that these closures are part of a bigger plan by GM to curb profit loss and expand in more profitable sectors. While it's easy to blame GM and say, oh, they just didn't understand what to do with Holden, there are a myriad of other factors that led to Holden shutting down, many of them beyond anyone's control. Sure. GM's decisions diluted the brand, no doubt, and detracted from their purely Australian image. But those decisions also kept the company afloat for so many years. It's sad that such an iconic brand will be lost to history after so many years and so many awesome cars. 
And I can say as an American, I've always liked holding cars. And one day, I'll hopefully get my hands on one of my own. Hopefully an old Maloo or a Commodore. <sighs> we mourn with you, Aussies. I will remember Maloo. Maloo, remember me. Won't let time pass me by. Lullaby. Will Holden ever be resurrected in the future? Let me know what you think in the comments. Should GM bring back Holden if viable? I think so. I'm just not holding my breath. Let me know what your favorite Holden model is down in the comments. Yeah, I think it's a sad story, but uh, you know, that's how the economy be sometimes. <laughs> so, like, I don't know money. I don't know business. I'm a guy on the YouTubes just talking. For more content, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell if you want to be notified of more donut videos. Uh, we do Wheelhouse every Monday. Follow Donut at Donut Media on all social. Follow me at Nolan J. Sykes. Thank you so much for watching. Australia, I love you. Be kind. I'll see you next time.